guys and welcome back to another video hope you are okay on that side of the screen and today here we are with the latest model from terra master this is a network attached storage solution with a 10 gigabit connection which is just awesome i will leave a link right over here for my 10 gigabit switch from kinap and if you want to take full advantage of its features then you will need something similar to that or something like the aces that i will leave also right over here which doesn't have a 10 gigabit but it has a link aggregation of 2 gigabits so you will get a little bit more now in terms of the unboxing experience once we open the package we will find the network attached storage unit which is the f5 422 and we will get a case with all the necessary accessories like screws a screwdriver including also the power adapter and so on and so forth in terms of the base specifications it has an intel quad core uh, CPU with 1.5 gigahertz that goes up to a turbo boost of 2.3 with 4 gigabytes of RAM. It has two slots to put RAM so you, we can upgrade up to 8 gigabytes which will be the maximum of this unit. Now in terms of setting it up with the hard drives I'm using the Toshiba N300 discs. I will leave a link down below so that you guys can check it out. I've been using it for quite some years. Now i have really simple to assemble. We just need to put the screws and that is it i'm using four discs out of five bays and if you don't need five bays there is a version of four bays and another version of two bays with the same specification so i'll leave a link down below so that you guys can check that out now in terms of connectivity at the back we'll find a hdmi connection which i still have to explore a little bit more but as you can see right now i only see lines of code i can see the background of the operating system which is linux but i will try to find out if there is another case scenarios that we can use in the past we have seen some devices with hdmi output that we can have a interface a friendlier interface and i will try to figure out if that's possible or not now we will also have two usb 3.0 connections right over here two gigabit connections that we can use for a link aggregation device and then we have the 10 gigabit connection right at the bottom and we also have the power input jack right over here in terms of build quality it's the usual on terra master the front and back is a nice plastic and then all the body is brushed aluminium and aluminium at the bottom with some rubber feeds to uh, absorb the vibration in terms of the initialization it's really simple we just need to connect the unit and after that go to our browser and just follow the steps basically that is it in terms of 10-15 minutes we will have the unit ready to be used now in terms of the software let's take a look here at the screen terra master has been involving uh, through the years i think i did review all of the units that they have released so far so if you check the channel for terra master you will find all of them and one thing that you will find is the evolution and that is a great thing to see now this is an improvement of the software and we will have a few different things right over here that I will try to share to that side of the screen first of all I should mention this notification right over here because I did restart the machine just a few minutes ago and it's resyncing the disks or the RAID that I created so have in mind that there will be some delay here and there because the machine is being used nothing serious but just a warning so this is the notifications i've got down right over here like a dashboard control center which will give me in a snapshot the what what's happening with the unit so right over here general information the version of the Tosh, which is the operating system have in mind that they will be releasing soon version 5 and i'm really curious to know what they will be improving so stay tuned to to discover as soon as i get that update i will create a video and share with you guys we also have the network information right over here and then we have the resources cpu is being used 24 percent memory more or less the same and storage is still synchronized this is one of the menus that we get to get a glimpse of what's happening with the uh, network attached storage solution and we have here the admin settings and language we are in english unfortunately i don't have portuguese option for my uh, home language but that is okay then notifications and the disk that i've got connected just to show you one of the options now let's look at the control panel um, we have several options right over here in terms of the users and user groups and so on and so forth uh, i will try to be as fast as possible but just to give you an idea that creating a user is just really easy let's say that i want to 
create a user right over here called Antonio description U Antonio or something similar and then password uh, we just need to select one password and password uh, just to confirm and then next if we want to give him a storage quota let's say that I want to attribute to Antonio just five gigabytes of space and once he reaches that limit he will have to manage delete and and so on to to get um, so I could put here five gigabytes but in this particular case no I will give him unlimited access so if I want to give him a group if I want to assign him to a group which in this particular case there's one by default which is all users but that's not really a group in my opinion and then we have the admin group no I will not so next and I want him to read and write on everything that it's created so far so yes let's press yes and create so at this moment we have just created a new user you can create for one of your employees one of your partners one of your kids at home something like that and the only one that it's disabled right over here is the guest now we can also create groups with the same menus and so on and so forth we can create shared folders and at this moment i have four if i go right over here I've got these four folders right over here with one plus, which is the admin folder that doesn't appear as a shared folder. I can also go to the domain and create um, folders based on domains and remote folders to have access NFS remote folder or CIF remote folder. So these are the main options that we've got right over here. Then we have the net options and uh, if we go through each one of these, we will have options that we configured at the beginning that we can always change. Network interface. At this moment, I'm only connected via gigabit. And if I press right over here, it will show me the information of my connectivity and the others are disconnected. If I go back, we also have Wi-Fi, VPN and proxy connection. File services, we have all of them, so we can enable or disable at this moment. I have all of them enabled. Then we have the terminal um, Telnet SSH um, and SNMP. So basically we can use both services and discovery service. So we can search on the network for UPnP uh, services, devices running this service are bonjour. So here we are with the network services and then we have the storage manager. To me, it's one of the most interesting ones. As you can see, it's synchronizing still at 25% more or less. So that takes a little bit longer. Uh, the file system is right over here. In terms of used space 728, basically it's the system plus some apps that's already installed here. And I will share with you guys in just a few moments. Then we also have the storage pool, which will show you us some more information and it also says synchronizing but that info we had already it shows the disks that we are using and the total capacity and free space and we can delete and create new pools of course on the volume i can also create delete uh, this raid right over here i could delete it and create another raid mode i did choose raid 5 which i believe that it's the most balanced one for your units such as this but you can use raid 0 raid 1 raid 5 raid 6 raid 10 so you just ah and single disc you can also use single disc so there are a lot of options and depending on the way that you use one of these devices you might want to choose a different one that i'm using then we also have virtual discs uh, the possibility to enable and create virtual discs the external storage which at this moment i've got a disc connected right over here it's an hp with uh, xfat system good with free space 949 uh, gigabytes of free space and then hot spare which means that we can create a hot spare that we can just plug in and plug out now let's move on to the next which is general settings basically we will have time language and so on and so forth nothing really interesting right over here but we need these settings hardware and power a little bit more interesting if we go to the hardware we have the fan which is really silent at this moment it's working on the smart mode which is if it gets really hot it will ramp up the fan if it's normal like it is it will just go lower but we can put full speed so that you can see or hear that is dead silent. At this moment, I can feel the airflow, which is a lot more than what it was, but I don't hear it. So it's a unit, it's silent. Uh, Terramaster has done over the years units that have fans that are very quiet, unlike other units that we have seen in the past with other brands that it looks like, a, or it sounds like an aeroplane right over here. You can put it even, I would say, 
on your bedroom, although I wouldn't, but if you put it on a living room or something like that, you will not be bothered. Then we have the buzzer settings, and if we want to let the hard drive sleep or not, I would suggest yes, depending on the way that you work, but I would say one hour without any access, then leave the drives to sleep. Uh, after that, we also have uh, back here the yes confirmed power if you want to enable wake on LAN if you want to auto power on after a power you outage now I always advise to connect devices such as this one to a UPS unit so that we don't get any power outage and if the power outage takes too long then we will need or we will have time to shut it down properly and that is no sudden power outages which is really bad for the discs just have this in mind and then also the power on and off schedule if you want to disable completely from one hour to another hour then we can do that as well notifications as we have seen we also have the security all of these options right over here and then update and security um, we have the software update which is at this moment on the latest version backup and restore if i want to back up the settings that i've got configured right over here i can just back it up and if in the future I need to reset the whole machine by some reason and then I just need to upload that file and in a few seconds I've got everything configured as it was which is really awesome now besides this we also have uh, on the other menu the system information which basically will give us uh, a little bit more information of what we had on the initial dashboard so we can see the CPU right over here this information will be useful if you want to check out what CPU exactly is here and the benchmarks and the power that it has especially if you want to transcode videos on Plex or something like that because you can install Plex as we will be able to see we also have the services status so it will show us what is running and what's enabled and disabled and then the resource monitor we can see um, one by one the CPU what it's being used and what's not and the memory storage bandwidth processes services and user finally system log which will record what we have been doing since we started the machine and basically this is it now there are a lot more things inside of each of these but just to give you an idea what you can do now if i go to apps which is one of the favorite ones that i've got on any network attached storage solution the possibility to expand and Terramaster over the years has been expanding a lot and at this moment has a lot more apps than it used to have so as you can see a lot right over here you have Plex and MB right over where it is MB is right over here so if you want a multimedia center this is a great machine for that now if you want to check out you can just um, pause the video and you will be able to check out with a bit more detail but just to quickly show you that there are a lot and there are other apps that you will be able to install manually only so one of the options as well now if i close this menu and we go to the backup here backup uh, this is a little bit different from the other operating system that we had right over here we have two options rsync and time machine rsync basically is the option to back up this device to another device that it's on a diff localization so not at home it's on my parents home or in another company or something like that because if there is something that will damage completely this machine there is another machine with an exact mirror of what is the only downside is that we need two units it doesn't need to be the same unit but that have this rsync capability we also have time machine right over here so i can use it to back up apple computers automatically based on time machine settings which is great now i've done all, download a few apps that will allow us to uh, make uh, backups we have double backup snapshot and usb copy especially i find this one interesting uh, i can back up from uh, a shared folder for example next and select the destination if i want to use a local shared folder or if i want to put it on a cloud drive so i can select for example right over here uh, remote tinage device web dev server local shared folder play next and backup one back shared folder can be the admin next and select the folder that you want to back up so i can back up from this one right over here to the other press next backup name we can just put test right over here press next 
and then enable notifications, compress stats or enable schedule every day at something or Sundays, Mondays, Wednesdays and so on and so forth. So this is one of the options that we have. I will not create right over here. And then we have the restore. Now, I do find really interesting this tool right over here, which is the USB copy. And if I'm not mistaken, on previous versions, we had this on the control panel, this backup, which I can create, for example, right over here, uh, backup test. And if I want to backup from the NASH to USB or USB to the NASH. But let's say that I want the NASH to a USB that is the same capacity and I can put everything on that disk just as a backup. So let's select something right over here, application, public or test. Yeah, okay. And then destination, I can select a folder. There we go. After that, I can just play next. And I would want incremental. And incremental, I would want to overwrite if there is a file conflict because I want the latest version. Press next, backup now, do not backup. The copy task starts immediately after the USB device is plugged in. This depends if we are copying something from a USB drive on a daily basis that we work and then just put it here, then I would uh, select this or in this particular case, I would want to backup schedule. So every day or every Sunday or Monday, for example, at midnight, there will be a backup from uh, this volume to this volume which is the external hard drive so this is one of the interesting things that we can do with one of these devices and basically this is it there is a lot more that we can do if you have any question or any specific thing that you want to try to do and you are not sure leave a comment down below i will answer as best and as fast as i can hope that the video was helpful in some way and if it was don't forget the usual thumbs up right over there my name is roberto george and as always i'll see you guys on the next one